Welcome back to the Shave Horse Build. Today we're going to glue up the rail assembly. So that means we need to have our two rails, our tail block, our center block, and our front leg prepared. So let's get started. So we've got all of our stock squared up for these parts. And the first thing we want to do is lay out the center block and get it cut out. The dimensions on the center block aren't absolutely critical, so this is a really good place to start if you're just warming up with your handsaw. So when I prepped my stock for all my boards, I had to start out with a true face and a true edge. So those are going to become my reference edges for when I'm doing my layout. The first thing we need to do is mark a square end on this part. And I'm always going to be referencing one of those two true faces, true edges. All right, let's make some cuts. Square. I can clean that up. Right. So I think for this angled cut, I'm actually going to put the block in the vise and I'll cut from two different directions so that way I can have a good grip on the part. Clean up that edge, those faces. And uh, this angle on this block, all it does is give the front leg a place to go. You can actually swing the leg up into the body if you pull one of the bolts out and it gives that just enough room for the toe of that foot to come in and hide inside the rail. So if you never plan to pack up your shave horse like that, then you can just leave this straight. Next thing we'll do is cut the angle on the tail block. And all these angles on the plans, they're set up to match um, standard, standard detents on a chop saw. So, uh, you know, when I designed these, I figured most people would be cutting these parts with a chop saw, but I wanted to make sure that uh, the video showed how you could do it without power tools if you didn't have them at your disposal. I'm going to mark this angle with a compass first and a pencil, and then I'm going to come back and use a knife to deepen the line. So since we're using a knife to deepen this line, we need something a little more stout than a simple compass. So I grabbed this bevel here. And we'll set it to the line, and then we'll knife it off. And I'm dropping the, the knife into the knife line, into the cut, and moving the square up to that. Back the other way here, same thing, drop the knife into the cut. And this is our reference edge, so we'll come from there. So 
So I find it easiest to cut back towards the fence. So um, since I'm a right-hander, if I was lefty, I would set it up to go the other way. Just basically working my way back, only on advancing on one face at a time. So now I've got this kerf established. So I'm going to drop the heel of the saw down as I cut and work my way down this side. to cut the entire end of the rail assembly at one time after the glue up. So we can leave this long, it'll just hang out the back of the glue up and then we'll cut it off, uh, cut off all the extra that we don't need. So the tail, the, the stock for the tail block, it doesn't really need to go any farther than this. So that's ready to go. The next thing we wanna do is cut out the front leg. So this is my stock, this is my reference edge. We can go ahead and mark the angle on the front end. And set our gate our bevel gauge. So from this point forward, when we're working with the front end, either the rails or the leg, we're going to use this bevel gauge to do all the angle layout. I'm going to go ahead and cut this end to the angle that I need. So that way I can hook a tape measure on the end for the rest of my layout. finish making this cut and I will stop the cameras. Hi everybody! That, that camera right there, that's the main camera. Okay. So what do we have here for you, Daddy? I am cutting the end of the front leg, the bottom of the end of the front leg. Oh! We're almost done! Now it's done! Right off the saw. I don't even have to touch it up. That's great. Let's go eat some dinner. Yeah! Bye! Okay, now that we've cut the end to shape, we can lay out the rest of the leg. This line we're going to want to cut by hand and make sure that it's completely true. This line we can just cut at the bandsaw and, and clean it up with a hand plane. We don't have to worry about being exactly on the line on this edge. This is just to reduce a little bit of weight in the leg, make it look a little bit better, make it a little bit lighter. got off my line just a tiny little bit when I was making that cut, but that's not too hard to fix. 
So I'm going to go ahead and chamfer this exit so that I don't blow it out. I'm going to have to do that to the part anyways. First thing I'm going to do is get it square in this direction. be able to see there's this little low spot right here that I'm cleaning up. Okay, that takes care of that. Okay, we're looking good there. Now let's check the angle. I'm way out. Angle is way too shallow. So I'm going to take some chamfering passes here. That's probably a good representation of what I need to remove to get this angle back. I should have been a little more careful with my saw. Okay, that part is good to go. Now I can go to the bandsaw and knock this off. Okay, that's our front leg. On to the rails. But not just yet. Uh, those of you who are playing along at home may have caught a mistake I just made. Uh, after I cut the end to length on the bottom here, I pulled the tape measure out and marked out the measurement on the plans, but that distance is from here to here when you square the line off. So what I should have done was mark the distance, square, square a line across, and then, oops, okay. And then mark the angle. So that sh should be the length of the leg. The problem is now I've already, I've already cut this section here to length. What I can do to solve this problem, since I can't measure from the bottom up again, is go the other direction. And the way I'll do that is basically measure the difference. And it's uh, one and five eighths difference between here and here. So I'll just come down here, mark one and five eighths, square my line across, It's not a huge difference between, well, this line here is not a huge difference. This is a huge difference. I need to cut this off. This little difference here, I could leave it or I could cut it off. I could go either way. Uh, since this one is going out to a customer, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off where it's supposed to be uh, and, uh, and then go ahead and clean it up one more time with the low angle jack plane. Okay, now we can move on to the rails. Okay, so now we're going to lay out the cuts for the front end of the rail and then use those to lay out the rest of the holes that we need to drill before we do our glue up. So when I, um, when I was milling these boards and breaking them out of the stock, I went ahead and put a triangle on the end here so that I could, uh, could easily get the book match back in order. And what I'm gonna do first is just lay out using uh, this is the reference edge. So I guess I have a choice as to whether I put the heart side out or the bark side out. And it looks like the heart side is a little more attractive. So I'm gonna make that my outside face. So what I'm gonna do is line these up 
and go ahead and do a uh, French triangle so that I can um, you know, tell the difference between uh, top, bottom, front, back. And the thing about this build is whenever we talk about the front of the shape horse versus the back, just imagine you're sitting on the horse, whatever faces that way is front and whatever faces that way is back. So um, in this case, the first part you want to do is the, the angle for the front leg where that's going to go. So we'll flip this one down and move this one out of the way. And that's my reference surface. There's my angle. And we're going to knife it in. cut each of these parts separately, but then we're gonna clamp them together to, uh, to plane the faces so that they're all completely coplanar. Doing a light pass, a little bit medium pressure on the second pass, and then hard pressure on the final pass. And that's my reference face, so I wanna put the stock of the square on that face. For this cut, I've got a second um, bench hook to steady the work on. And I think what I'm going to do here is grab a hold fast and clamp the part down. I've got a piece of scrap here to keep it from wiggling around while I'm sawing. And I'm going to do my best to be a little more careful this time. So the first step is going to be to chamfer this edge so I don't blow it out. We'll need to check our work quite a bit. This is a reference face over here. I'm going to chamfer this edge. I'm going to go across like this. Okay, that's good. Okay, now we can lay out all of our holes and uh, I managed to uh, do the work once out of frame. So we'll film it again on this side. So in this, in this version of the shave horse, I'm going to be making the center block removable. I want to leave an option for having a bull shave horse uh, in here, and the center block can get in the way of the swing arm. So 
Um, this will be something that I'll include uh, with drawings or I'll make it available for download, something along those lines. Um, but um, I'm going to go ahead and lay out a couple of holes here and they'll be drilled and counterboard the exact same way as the ones at the front of the shave horse. thing that I'll do before I take them over to the drill press to drill the counter bores and the through holes is to um, is to use a an awl to prick where the holes are to help the drill bit find the center that I want it to drill. So I'll drill all the counter bores first and then I'll actually clamp the boards together and drill through both boards at the same time with the uh, 3 8 bit for the pilot hole for the bolt. Now we're going to set up the front leg in its final position and get it clamped down. And while we're at it, we might as well lay out the location of this block. Flush at the front and have an eighth of an inch reveal at the top. It's starting to rain, so I'll probably need to take a break. Okay, the rain has stopped, and uh, while it was raining, I took a moment to kind of clear some extra stuff off the bench. Uh, let's get back to it. So, you'll notice that uh, there's a bit of a reveal here on the bottom of these parts, and uh, in the plans, it's actually shown to be flush. Uh, I made a, a couple of changes on this build. I'm just trying some new things. I'm always kind of screwing with the design a bit. So, uh, if you're building it exactly to plan, these parts, when you get the eighth inch reveal here, you should be flush on this side. So don't worry if this doesn't look exactly like what you're doing. So we want the front of the front leg to be flush with the front of the rails. And we can check that here. It looks like I need to bump it forward just a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna set this at an eighth of an inch to match the reveal shown in the plans. And I'm gonna check it here. Okay, I think we're good there. Pretty good. I'm go ahead and clamp that one down. Check our rails here. That looks really good. Right on the line, that looks 
Great, okay. One last check. This way. So now you can use a cordless drill and you can use the holes you've already drilled on the drill press uh, as guides, or if you're doing the drilling all by hand, you can drill the entire through hole all at once right now. Uh, you would need some mirrors and I'll show you how to do some drilling by hand, uh, you know, to drill a square hole uh, on this when I get ready to do this setup back here. But for now, we want to get these holes drilled so that we can drop some bolts in here that will help keep this end lined up while we do the glue up on this end. So let me get my bit and brace and I'll drill some holes. Okay, so we've got our uh, 3 8 wood owl bit uh, with a lead screw. These are great bits. I use them all the time. And I'm going to basically just run it in backwards to get it started and then go straight through. So now that we've got the holes drilled, uh, before we do the glue up, we want to make sure we smooth um, both wide faces of each of these boards because on the inside you won't be able to get to it. On the outside, when you try to run a hand plane over it, uh, in the spaces where there aren't spacer blocks, it's unsupported and it'll actually flex and you have to work really hard to get the planer to bite. You can always put shims in there if you forget, but it's easier just to do it now. Uh, when everything is just single flat boards. Uh, and then you'll notice uh, when I'm done, I'm also chamfering the inside faces um, or the, the edges on the inside faces. So these three edges here. And I'll start out with a, a smaller block plane that's set pretty rank. So it's taken a, a pretty heavy cut. And then I'll follow up with a couple of passes uh, with my low angle block plane and it's set up like a smoother. So it's taken a really light cut. It's cleaning up any you know small tear out that the uh, that the bigger or the smaller block plane is leaving behind. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth these faces inside and out, and then um, we'll get on to the glue up. We had to measure it as a full block. So we'll measure the length on the plans, square it up, and then run the bevel down from there. Okay, so that is where the tail block needs to be glued on. Okay, I've got my glue up laid out. This is the area of the rail where there's actually gonna be glue. From anything from here back is gonna get cut off, so I'll just put glue in this space. Uh, initially, I had laid these lines out all the way top to bottom of the rail, um, but now that I'm kinda set up, I know where I'm gonna be. I actually went back with a scraper and removed the pencil marks from this spot. So that way, uh, when the glue up is done and the reveal is here, you won't be able to see them. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I basically laid out a, a line here on this face to make sure that I didn't put glue all the way down the face of this board. Um, if I'm careful about how I glue it up, I can use this material for something if I run into trouble somewhere else. It's already the right thickness. So, Next thing I'm going to do is get this board into position on the rail. Get the right reveal at the top. Make sure that my pencil mark is completely covered up. Might as well just cover that up while we're gluing it. Okay, and then I'm going to take this little piece of scrap with some tape on it and I'm going to clamp it right up against this face. And what that'll do is just give me one, one edge, one dimension that I don't have to worry about during the glue up. I've got the, uh, the rail kind of hanging over the edge of the bench just a little bit so that I can do this without worrying about it. 
Okay, so that's there. We'll just leave that there. Uh, on this end, I've got uh, the two long bolts running up through one of each of these holes. And what that allows me to do is clamp, is actually put these parts in place and use the bolt holes to line everything up on this end, which will help keep things aligned on that end. And if I have one complaint about these, uh, these wood owl bits, is they drill, it's either undersized or it's like the perfect size hole. Um, so you have, you have to kind of come back with a, a twist bit and kind of ream these holes out afterwards so that they're not so hard to, to drive the bolts through. And then once I get the, the other rail up here, after the glue is on, I'll take the two short bolts and I'll slip them through from the top and that'll give us two points of alignment at each spot. So I think we are ready to go for this glue up. Really fancy glue brush. And I'll take a, a toothbrush and some water and clean up any squeeze out after this is done. But I do, when I'm doing a glue up like this where the the seam is going to be really hard to clean. I can go just past the line on this side. Um, I tend to leave the glue back a little bit from what those exposed edges, just a tiny bit. This is a really wide surface area, so you don't really have to worry about uh, starving the joint for glue around the edges. Put this on there. Okay, glue here. check for square. Okay, so this board is shifted this way, and rather than bang on the board, what I can do is lift the clamp up and tilt it away, well, tilt the top towards the side that's sticking out, and then when I clamp it, oops, the clamp is going to pull itself square to these two faces, so that'll bring that top back into square. And it actually went just a little too far, so I'll just loosen it up, clamp it back down. Okay, so we're square across the tops of the two rails. Check the reveal again before I get too much pressure on here. So what's happening here is that this part is pivoting under the clamp. So what I'm going to do is get that top, make sure it's square, put another clamp here, pull this clamp loose, now I can tap it. Okay, we're good. Square, also good. Okay, pull this clamp here. Get a piece of scrap out of there. A little bit of squeeze out there. So what I'm going to do is um, grab a toothbrush and some clean water and scrub any squeeze out off. And then while the glue is drying, I can get to work on laying out and cutting out my rear legs because that's the next thing we're going to install after we trim this to length. And we'll get to that in the next video.